my liege. I did deny no prisoners, but I remember when the fight was done and I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, trim and neatly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom with his chin new reaped, shewn like the stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb he held a pouncet box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and took away again, and therewith angry when it next came there, took it in snuff, and still he smiled and talked, and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, called them untaught knaves, unmannerly, to bring a slovenly, unhandsome course betwixt the wind and his nobility. With many a holiday and lady term, he questioned me, demanding amongst the rest my prisoners in your majesty's behalf. I then, all smarting with my wounds being cold, to be so pestered with a popinjay, answered neglectingly, I know not what he should or should not, for he made me mad to see him shine so brisk and smell so sweet and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds, God save the mark! And telling me the sovereignest thing on earth was Parma City for an inward bruise, and the great pity such it was that villainous salt Peter should be digged out of the bowels of the harmless earth which many a good tall fellow had destroyed so cowardly, and but for these guns he would himself have been a soldier! This bald, unjointed chat of his, my lord, led me to answer indirectly as I said, and I beseech you, let not his report come current for an accusation betwixt my love and your high majesty. Show us your willy at thedigitalstage.org.